Hi, it's Rachel here from Offroad CC and the latest test bike I've been riding is this, the Vitus Summit 27, a long travel enduro bike that sits at the cheaper end of the scale for the Summit range of bikes. Relatively unchanged from the 2018 bike, the 2019 Vitus Summit 27 gets some spec upgrades which includes a longer 170mm fork, which this year is a Manitou Matop Comp, an 11-speed SRAM NX drivetrain and grippy Maxit, Maxxis DHF wide trail tyres. That drivetrain gets a 30 tooth chainring, an 11 to 46 tooth Sunrace cassette and 170mm Suntour cranks. Then there's Shimano MT500 two piston brakes to help you stop. The bike also features a Brandex Ascend dropper post, WTB STI29 wheels and a selection of nuke proof finishing kit. Other notable features are the threaded bottom bracket and a very neat under the down tube external cable routing where the bottom third of this is covered by a plastic guard. The only thing you need to watch is the dropper proof routing which is around the shock and looks a little questionable so it'll be best to keep an eye on it to ensure that cable is always in good condition. This bike is the base model Summit which comes in at 1700 quid. The next model up is the Vitus Summit 27 VR. This bike still has an alloy frame and the same geometry, but for that £400 more, you get a Super Deluxe R Shock, a Yari Fork, SRAM NX Eagle and four piston Guide RE brakes. It certainly gives a bit of food for thought with regards to whether you can stretch those extra pounds and afford the better spec bike or not. With regards to the geometry carried over to 2019, the Summit range is pretty progressive. That effective slack seat tube angle aside. This medium gets an above average reach of 453 mm, a head angle of 65 degrees, chain stays of 435 mm, and it all adds up to a wheelbase of 1205 mm. The effective seat tube angle is 74.5 degrees, which means the effective top tube turns out pretty long at 616 mm, and that, along with a 50 mm stem, left quite a stretched out seated position. I swapped out the stem for a 35mm one, which was much more comfortable for climbing and consequently made the steering more direct too when descending. This geometry gives rise to a well-balanced ride, and although I did find the 120mm head tube alongside a 170mm fork left the front end a little high for my liking, I removed the spaces under the stem to get lower and found myself in a much preferred position, but one that was still relatively high. When climbing, the Summit 27 is workmanlike, but the slack seat tube angle makes things less efficient than they might otherwise be. It goes uphill okay though, and exert the effort, sit on the nose of the saddle, and it'll climb up more techie climbs as well. On the most part, I enjoyed my time on the Summit 27. It certainly gives a big bang for the buck when descending. I found it was at home on the most technical trails and the bike is a good mix between downhill slayer and more responsive long travel trail bike. The Summit 27 took everything in its stride, including all my usual techie test tracks. The rear shock and the kinematics are good and the bike provides a supple initial feel and good progression throughout the stroke too. I did feel that that Manitou Matop Comp Fork let the bike down though. My test bike had play in the bushes from the very start and that got worse as the test proceeded. Whilst this isn't noticeable when the forks sag, when that fork is fully extended and then compressed again, it produced a disconcerting knocking feel. The fork also wasn't that supportive in the mid-stroke and running more air to combat this provides a harsher feel at low speeds. It did affect the bike as a whole and made it feel like it was a less plush affair than you'd expect from a long travel bike. It's also worth thinking about what aftermarket mudguards you might want to run as lots won't fit with this fork. Whilst the bike is confident more technical trails and bike part ones alike, there are some other component choices that might be on your upgrade list fairly soon. Those two-piston Shimano MT500 brakes, whilst are reliable, they aren't that powerful if you want to ride at top speeds downhill a lot. The dropper post is also disappointingly short, so given that this bike has a relatively short seat tube of 433mm, I'd expect to see a 150mm dropper post on this medium bike, but it gets a 120mm post. 
you get a shorter one on the small and then of course a longer one on the large bikes. This bike needs a shorter dropper post as the overall length of those Brand X posts are quite long so it needs a shorter one to allow shorter riders to insert the post further into the bike before meeting that point in the seat tube where the shock inserts. There are other brands out there which produce shorter overall length dropper posts with longer drops so one up components is one of them and might be an upgrade that you want to make. Using that post would allow you to get the saddle right out of the way when you're going downhill. Even after these gripes though, you have to remember this bike is only 1700 quid and for that it does hold quite a lot of potential as a good platform for upgrades later down the line. The frame has some neat features. You can run a bottle, it's got that guard on the down tube and it is good looking and of course that geometry is pretty good too. As I said, you might want to think carefully about the reality of buying the next model up and spending extra £400 on that and that gets you the instant brake, drivetrain and suspension upgrades. But if 1700 quid is your absolute ceiling price, then the Summit 27 will be ready to ride and ready for the other parts as you can afford them. Straight from the box, it is ready to ride. You just might want to keep an eye on the workings of your fork to make sure that the bike's running smoothly. So there's a full review over on offroad.cc now, so check that out and thanks very much for watching.